Hello, it's James from X-Robots. This is part four of building a virtual reality hoverbike game. In parts one and two, I built a bike which is a game controller you can sit on. You can lean in two directions. It's basically a rocking horse on a rocking horse. It's got a Vive tracker on it that tracks it into virtual reality. It's got pedals, it's got brake levers, and it's got buttons on the handlebars. In part three, we took it to Portsmouth University where students are gonna make a computer game for their final year degree project in computer game design and animation. We ended up putting a twist grip on it so we could vary the throttle and they started developing that game doing the character design and animation. It's looking okay, but we had a few problems with the physics where it turned upside down and everything went wrong. It's been a couple of months since that video went out and now they've actually nearly finished the game. So we've got a functioning game and it's looking pretty good. So let's see how they're doing. All right, we're back in the VR lab. So the game's moved on a significant amount, including being to steer properly and not turning upside down. So let's give it a spin. All right, so now we've got a, a proper UI for introing the game. So if you uh, want to give a demo of that. So uh, you can select the bike you want, which uh, puts it into VR. There we go. Should we have, uh, what, what other options have we got? Uh, we've got this one. Let's have the purple one. Um, can you just look around a bit of the bike behind you in that? So all the good graphics that we saw uh, from the lab. Yeah, nice touch. And uh, then uh, I guess you press start and off we go. Our intel suggests the MG core is located in brick coordinates. So we're in a kind of clearing. The objective of this mission is to paint the core and return to And uh, got a gun in one hand. Looks good. So you can shoot the characters, and there'll be more characters being added in eventually. And off we go with the gameplay, so oh, there they are. Alright, and sound as well. So if you uh, want to give that a spin and uh, steer around, we'll just grab the gun. So we've now got the leaning to steer pretty much sorted out. So you're doing quite well there. And we've got the twist grip of course that we put on and we've also got the pedals as well for extra sharp steering. So not doing too badly following that quite tight course there. And we can see some of the, uh, not the Ewok village, which we'll come closer to in a minute. There's some fire as well, which is looking pretty good. Can we shoot him? Yeah, yeah he can go up there. I don't know. I'm not sure I was pointing. <laughs> Robert Unit, you are approaching the energy core. An automatic retrieval system will activate when you are near the object. Over. So the Ewok village is now in the map. You can race around it. It's based around the Ewok village in Endor. So there's loads of different treetop levels. There's um, higher hearts, lower hearts. We've also added some torches, some flags, some totem poles. We've really tried to make it feel like a lived-in village um, where you can believe these creatures would exist. And in the middle there's a little power core for you to steal. And after that we've added in a full cave section. There's glowing gems, there's crystals, there's stalagmites, there's a bit of mist. Just to sort of diversify up the track a little bit from just a forest. To make the track easier to navigate, we added in a racing line that glows, um, similar to other games we've tested, um, makes it easy to navigate. And we also added some collision walls, so you can't go too far off the track and you also can't cut across corners. You have to actually follow the track now. So since uh, the last video you've seen, uh, steering was kind of improved upon a lot. Um, so now we're kind of based uh, steering on kind of Destiny 2 S controls. So kind of a lot of work was kind of trying to emulate that and kind of have it so when you'd lean, um, it kind of, it, it, you can kind of steer a little bit and then when you click the pedal in, you kind of increase the steering a bit. So it gives you more control kind of going around tire corners and stuff like that. So we're back with Rebecca who's doing all the texture to give these things colour and basically texture. So taking all those models and the animated things and what are you actually using? Uh, I'm using a program called Substance Painter, um, okay. which is 
basically allows me to do physical based art so I can paint directly onto the model rather than having to do a texture map in Photoshop. Yeah. So, so that's the actual the one of the hover bikes, which looks pretty good. Okay, so and you can draw on that in real time mm -hmm. and see the 3D model. Yeah, so you can do like that. <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah, it makes the job a lot faster. So one thing I kind of looked into was how to kind of make the world look more kind of pretty, I guess, and kind of look more like a space uh, planet. So we kind of added all, all these post-processing effects, so to change the color a little bit. Um, and a major thing was adding in fog. So as you can see, kind of this background here is kind of the clipping mask. Because um, as, as the map's quite big and uh, games in VR have to run around 90 frames per second, the clipping mask had to be quite low. Um, so to hide, hide this kind of awful clipping look, we kind of added in a bit of fog. So it kind of masks this kind of clipping view, so it kind of it, it makes it look more uh, easier on the eyes. And we kind of added in bloom to kind of make the fog shine a bit more, I guess. Added in some shading on like the shadows and added in a kind of, uh, kind of uh, a border around the outside of the, um, the, the camera itself. Uh, and that's about it, and this is kind of the finished look with all the post-processing added onto it. Um, and again, with the mall off, it, yeah, it, it makes a huge difference to the game. So we was also trying to look at the physics of what the moon might actually look like as well. So we are trying to see why the gas would be that colour, and we was looking up gases that would be blue and things like that. And we sort of based it a bit on uh, Saturn's moon Titan which is quite um, full of heavy gases and things and is why the hover bike flies so well because there's less gravity it's a lot smaller and you're orbiting a big gas giant that's in the background. So we're back with Matthew who's dealing with the animation for all of those 3D models to make them animated so the characters move and all those things happen. Basically I take the uh, untextured model and start adding sort of various bones and things so I can then move the bike as I needed, so I've got little flaps and things here. Uh, same with the character, obviously it's a bit more complicated uh, to do with skinning and just more complicated movements, but once that is done I can then put it on the bike and start sort of adding smaller movements in to make it more convincing. So here we've got some very subtle movements on the antennae and flaps which sort of simulate the wind and that will be put into the background of the game sort of keeps you occupied while you're flying around so this gives you something to shoot at so we've got a few little things here and then we've got a dogfight in the sky where two of the bikes are chasing the dropship so once it's gone into the game they'll be textured and we'll have things like lasers and stuff shooting out of them to sort of keep it more interesting and make it a lot more pretty. The trees and the rocks are all in the environment now. We put wind zones in to give a little bit of animation on the trees and the rocks are all fully textured and there's some glowing varieties, some mossy varieties and the terrain is all sculpted nicely, better than the white box we had last time. Yeah, so we've actually got rid of the gnome this time and we placed it in with the new sort of creature characters and at the moment they're still sort of quite placeholder and buggy but uh, it sort of shows you what will happen in the game and you can still sort of go past and shoot them and there'll be animations reacting on to what you do. Yeah, eventually there'll sort of be big death animations where they're flying back or sort of dissolving. We didn't want it too graphic but um, we might have some sort of huge ones as well, sort of 30 foot tall ones that'll sort of try and grab to you. So I think the great thing about this project is that the university really allowed us to work on this project and I think without being part of the university it would have been near impossible. No, I mean a year ago I never thought we'd be working on a VR hover bike for mm. the last year. It's been great fun, the university's been great, uh, Jane's been a great client, 
And yeah, it's been brilliant for our portfolio as well. It's definitely sort of helping us get a job. Mm. And if it's not taken by AI in a few years' time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. yeah, definitely. I think we've all loved working on it. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, university is definitely a place to kind of get projects like this where you can work with you know, great people like James and have lots of te uh, access to te technology and working on really cool stuff. So I think it was definitely worthwhile, um, you know, spending three years at university. Yeah, because outside of university, spending a year on a project like this would have been such a commitment mm. for us, whereas we were able to facilitate it so well here. Yeah. We took it to Comic-Con in the first weekend of May down in Portsmouth Comic-Con in Guildhall. It's the first Comic-Con they've run. It was a fantastic weekend. Um, everyone seemed to really enjoy the bike. We had loads of people testing it. It was just a great weekend, really. So um, as you can see, this person was absolutely loving it. You can just see the joy as they're racing around the track. Um, and that was pretty much the feeling from everyone for the whole weekend. So thank you for everyone who let us take it there. And yeah. So that was intended to be the last video in the series, but as the team mentioned, there's still a few things they want to do to the game to finish it, even though they don't have to, because they've finished their degrees, they've done the hand in, they've actually been marked for that unit, and they did exceptionally well. Well, they're still really enthusiastic, they want to finish the game, and they want to take the bike round to some more events, so there may be a follow-up video. But basically, that's all for now, so don't forget to subscribe for more updates on all the other projects. And don't forget also that most of my projects are funded through Patreon, so have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots and you can get access to my videos early and some other exclusive rewards. Alright, that's all for now. This person seems to be absolutely loving it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I can't, I can try that with a straight face. So.